Hey everyone. Hi, it's Dev and Tiana from Maniology. How are you guys doing? We're gonna give everyone a couple of um, minutes to just kind of join us and uh, get ready for this live. <laughs> oh gosh, all of a sudden it just started pouring outside. Yeah, it's raining in Hawaii. Our, um, a lot of people think that it's sunny year round. It's <laughs> not. I mean, for the most part, yes it is, but we have dry season and wet season, so. Um, We're definitely in our wet season right now. Yes. <laughs> wet season is usually a what, from like November to February? Yep, pretty much. We love it during wet season here. <laughs> we like, it's funny because, um, <clears throat> Even though we're surrounded by sun, we actually like cold weather in Hawaii. <laughs> There's a lot of us who well, really like cold. at least we do. Cold. Yeah. At least we do. There's several of us who like cold, dark, gloomy weather. Okay. Well, let's get started. Um, so again, this is Tiana and Dev. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we are going to talk to you guys about setting up for success. Yes, this is a huge topic. We always get so many inquiries from people of asking, you know, how do I protect my workspace? How do I do this? How do I do that? What so, do you use to clean up the plates? Mm -hmm. We're not going to dive into all of that. We're going to keep this really basic and do a, a little short show and tell, nail education um, for basically how you get started at stamping and then also how to not ruin your workspace. Yes. We've had a lot of people who are not familiar with acetone and how acetone can pretty much eat through your entire station. Um, so we want to kind of cover that for all those people who are like, what am I doing wrong? Why is my um, workstation uh, completely ruined and has all these awful acetone marks? So, <laughs> But I think before we dive in, uh, for those who are new, who are just joining us, uh, we are Maniology and uh, we it overall, we want to empower you to be creative and to express yourself one manicure at a time. And Dev and I are a part of the creative team, and so we're here to kind of help walk you through the whole nail stamping process. So today, we're just going to do something really quick for you and kind of show you how to set up your workspace. And again, if you want to see any of these things up close, in more detail, um, pricing, anything like that, then you can just go to www.maniology.com and check all these things out. Yes. Or even leave us a question. Uh, we'll definitely have some time at the end to maybe answer some of those. Let's get started. So the first thing that we want to talk about is setting up your workspace so that way acetone doesn't eat through everything. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think to mention about acetone, I think the average person who just does their nails, um, and I speak about myself, we don't touch 100% acetone. We never really use it. So of course we're grabbing nail polish removers that has like all of these vitamins and you know just additives inside um, and it's not 100% acetone. So I think when we recommend 100% acetone, the results are a little different, I guess, you know, it's, Say for example, I know that when I started off with nail stamping, I started using the acetone, it was eating up like the the finish of the wood of yes. my desk and my kitchen table. Yes. So that wasn't really nice. Um, I remember using heavy duty black trash bags as my workspace. That wasn't very pretty. Yeah, and then also <laughs> acetone does eat through plastic. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that a lot of people know, uh, don't realize about acetone. There are, um, for example, these bottles are acetone resistant. Um, there are special plastics that are resistant to acetone. However, not all plastic is resistant yes. to acetone. That is the reason why we don't, we tell you do not get acetone on your stamper. Uh, holder because it's not resistant to acetone. I think it, it'll start to get cloudy too. That's yes. Many, I think in our experience, shiny, very clear plastics are not acetone resistant. That is correct. <laughs> That's why also a lot of these bottles that you see that are sold at the grocery stores are all this kind of like milky plastic. Um, mm -hmm. 
I don't know why, what the cause is for that, but it just so happens that, um, yeah, clear plastics usually are not immune to acetone. <laughs> so when you are setting up your workspace, um, be aware, what kind of table do you have? Does it have some kind of black paint on it or a brown stain of some sort? Mm -hmm. um, and we're using glass. This is glass right yes. here. If you have glass, that is the best. If you don't have glass, that's okay. We're gonna tell you about some amazing things that can help you. Um, so yeah, acetone pretty much eats through everything. <laughs> so um, newspaper, also I know a lot of people that will use like newspaper or old, you know, just scratch paper that they have. Acetone won't eat through your paper. However, the ink on the paper will um, run. I notice if you put like your acetone soaked cottons on that, it'll run and then the ink from um, newspaper will end up bleeding all over the place. That's not fun. Yeah, not definitely not fun. So I guess first things first, let's start off with what you will use to actually put down on your tabletop or your workspace and let's kick it off with the the lotus mat. So today, because you know we only have a little, you know, small space to kind of show you what we're working with, we're actually using our lotus mini instead of the the larger size. We definitely recommend the larger size, the original one, which is about, I think it's about 14 inches long mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. wide. So it gives you more play space. But yes. this is a silicone mat. Yep. Oh. And Devin can show you. It's extremely flimsy too so you can fold it we don't recommend um folding it in half but i guess rolling it is what i meant yeah so, so you, you can roll it up and store it pretty easily mm -hmm. um and it's also, acetone resistant yes it is acetone resistant so i'm gonna show you right now i'm just gonna put some polish on here so that's another thing what can you use this mat for i'm sure people are kind of wondering that uh this mat aside from being acetone resistant, is made for swatching. So you can put polish onto your uh, mat. You can create decals if you're advanced. You can stamp on this. You can basically kind of map out your manicure um, before you go ahead and put it in your nails. You also have a couple of other features too. So there is like a square nail tip if you know we have some square lovers and then also some oval nail tips too so you can kind of map out your your manicure there's also an area where you can um measure out some people like to put jewels and things like that on their nails so you can use that tool there but yeah so now we're going to show you how easy it is to clean up with your mat um part of the other reason why we recommend the large mat especially if you're a beginner is because you have a tendency to make more of a mess when you're starting out. I mean, heck, who am I kidding? Like, I still we make still a mess. We still do too. <laughs> we still make a mess. So um, to have the bigger mat is much better because it allows you to uh, get a little bit more creative and messy. So mm -hmm. um, we highly recommend that. However, sometimes you don't have a large space, then this is great. So We do have something smaller as well. <laughs> the Lotus Mini actually comes in a Lotus Go, which is about half the size, but again, you know, when you're not, uh, you don't need a big space, then you have something smaller, another option, but okay. So the next thing that we're gonna show you, and we're gonna show you this in like two seconds, um, is our cotton claw. So this is our pineapple cotton claw. Mm -hmm. Just double checking. Or cotton you. grabber. Cotton grabber, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so a lot of people worry about messing their nails up when they're stamping, you know, you try to clean something and then you accidentally, or you, um, whoops here, you grab a cotton, but it's got acetone, touches your nails, cotton's everywhere. You don't want fuzzies on your newly painted nails after you've worked so hard. Everybody hates that. Yeah. So this is our solution to it. And it's our cotton claw. This makes cleanup so much easier because now instead of me having to do this with my fingers, I can just rely on this and not have to worry about my manicure getting messed up. Mm -hmm. So, And this tool is very simple to use. Um, all Devin did, which you can't really see, I guess, in the video and stuff, it's just the pineapple. It just presses in, kind of like a, a clicky pen. That's it. So there you can, you guys can kind of see it a little better. So this is really, really useful. And then this is also acetone resistant, which is nice. So if plastic does, or if acetone 
does touch this, like how it is now, you're not gonna have to worry. So that's good for cleaning. If say for instance, you know, sometimes polish gets everywhere and so you can clean it. However, we do have a solution for people who don't actually have access to something like that. Your handy tweezers. Yes. So the only thing about the tweezers is, this is kind of annoying. <laughs> you know, you, you can't... A limited space to actually yeah. grab the cotton. You really have to like wedge it in there and then, but you can still do the same thing. So you can still clean your space. Um, however, I recommend that if you're gonna use these tweezers for cleaning your nail space, don't use them on your face. Um, <laughs> yeah, just in case. Designate it for the nails. Yeah, designate it for the nails, for touching all the Yeah, <laughs> don't stuff. go plucking the eyebrows yeah. with that, for sure. So um, definitely try that out. Um, I see that there are some people who have mentioned that they have the Lotus Mat and that they absolutely love it. Great. They don't know how they live life without it. I completely mm. understand. Yes. <laughs> um, my mat stays up 24 seven at my house in my designated space. It is a hot mess and it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause at least it's not my desk space. Um, okay, so moving on. Some other important things to have when you are getting started with nail stamping. So let's introduce this baby. This, this is the sticky stamper station. So there is a peel tab here and you want to make sure you peel that back. You can use this to plan out your manicure, write your notes or whatever. And you can also use this side, which you can see is glossy to do decals on actually. Oh, can we see the gloss? Oh, yeah, there you go, you, you can kind of see a sheen, yeah. So this glossiness is perfect for creating decals, reverse stamping on it. Um, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll just fold this up. So that way if I have notes, I can look back at it. And also, you know, usually you don't need the whole sheet when you're working, you just need a half sheet. And you can clean off your stamper just like that. So How simple that is, yeah. And that also, um, I also use these sheets too. Like say for instance, if you need to kind of isolate or kind of clean off your stamper, if you've picked up a, a design that's maybe like you over picked up, you could also use it for that too. Um, yeah, this pad is extremely important to have on your workspace. Um, and it also comes with refillables. Yep. So once you've run out of your last sheet, you don't worry. We have refillables for this, so you can keep your, your beautiful little pad here mm -hmm. in a, your case. Yes, and the other thing is placement of these items. Mm -hmm. So if you are a right-handed person, the things that you're gonna need the most should be close to your right side. So for example, if I'm stamping um, and I quickly need to clean off my stamper, it makes sense for me to just go to the right versus having my stamper, uh, stamping station over here and then I have to cross over. Those here. kinds of things make it very inconvenient. Yes, I, I do agree. Um, that's another thing about setting up for success and, and, and properly organizing your workstation because the act of stamping is like a seven second you know, um, act in between from the time you put the polish down on your plate to the time that you're scraping and picking up everything needs to happen very quickly to the mm -hmm. time that you, you put it onto your nail. So making sure that your workspace is set up so you can do all of these acts from the scrape stamp um, is very important to yes. get a really good stamp. Plus, I don't know how many times I've reached over <laughs> yes, and then got polish all under here, not realizing that there's still wet polish here. And if I just put my stamper, uh, my stamping station on the right side, I could have saved myself from having to like clean up polish all underneath my hand and my arm. I'm sure tons of you have uh, experienced that too. So We still do. I mean, to be honest, when we're testing, you know, we just do that. But you don't want to be scrambling looking for things when you've already picked up the design. You want everything to kind of just be right there. So just help to avoid and make sure that you get the perfect stamp onto your nail. Again, organizing your workspace is, is number one. Yes, it is. So we set up our polishes and things like that as if we were going to stamp. Um, 
usually of course they wouldn't be laying down on their side like this. We're only doing this so that way you guys can see it because if we showed it from the top up, you would just see black bottles. <laughs> so um, we light it down on the side so you can see what kind of things that we usually like to have. So usually in a regular setup, you want to have a cuticle protector. That way it also helps your cleanup game. You don't have to spend hours and hours cleaning up. So if you've never seen this helpful little tool, um, Dev, can I use your finger? Yep, sure, go right ahead. Okay, I'm sorry, We're, I'm trying to do this on the camera so everybody can see, but basically this is a cuticle protector. This is our Manny mask. And what this helps you with is to make cleanup a whole lot easier. So as you can see, I'm just putting this layer around the cuticle and it will dry. Yep. I am gonna glob it on because it makes it a little bit easier for me to pull it off. <laughs> um, but that's just a personal preference. And this is latex free. So if anybody out there who has latex allergies, this is a really good solution. Um, or even if you don't. Yep, this is also still an awesome solution because it sucks doing an ombre and then having to clean all of this up over here. Or a gradient, yeah. <laughs> yep, so this will make your life significantly easier, especially if you're working with black polish or maybe you're not very good at polishing in the lines. Um, this will make your life nice and simple. So we're gonna let that dry for a second while we continue to talk about um, other items that we have in our mandatory workspace. This Actually, is like our Deb, absolute Do you mind need. if I jump back? Oh yeah, um, yeah. I want to actually give you guys another solution if you do not have the sticky stamper station or if you need to clean off your, your stamper is scotch tape. Yes. Scotch tape works wonderfully with that. We love um, scotch tape. I know some people also use a lint pad, uh, a lint roller. The only reason why I'm not the hugest fan of the lint roller is because it always rolls away. You either have to stick it somewhere or, you know, it just, I don't like the fact that it's sticky all the way around. So then sometimes if you're sticking it on something, you know, it's getting dirty on one side and then, you know, it gets dust on it. And if you're like me and use your sticky thing until it's completely covered, you'll usually end up getting dust back on your stamper. Oh yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why I kind of prefer, um, tape is okay, or even this pad, of course I love the best because I don't ever have to worry about like pulling off a piece of tape, using it to clean up, putting it aside, you know, just all these little things. Well, Stephanie said that she uses leftover washi tape. That definitely works too. Washi tape is good. I've actually seen also people use washi tape for creating designs on your nails, but that's a different video. So um, scotch tape, if you don't have the sticky stamper, um, you need something sticky, scotch tape is a really good solution. Yes. Um, are we almost dry? We are almost, we're almost dry and you can tell because it's kind of turning clear here, but here where you can still see it's a little bit milky looking, not dry yet. So we're just gonna let that go. And again, that's because I put a lot Globbed on. it on. <laughs> I globbed it on. Um, you can do less. I just wanted to make it very obvious for you guys for the video. Um, mm -hmm. So then other items that we usually like to include in our stamping station or our workspace are having your top coats nearby. But since you don't need them, you're not going to be, you only use these like once. So putting it up at the top I think is better. And then having your primary like stamping polishes, the colors that you're gonna be working with a lot, keeping it on again the side that you are dominant with. So if you're left-handed, then on your left side. And I know it sounds like a pain, but cap your polishes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's. I know, you know, you're gonna be going through the process of stamping, but cap your polishes. Don't. Um, don't leave it open. Don't do this. this. Yeah. Don't do this. We've done this so many times and so many times polish spills. We're telling you this because we've done it way too many times. <laughs> so yeah. don't be like us, don't do this, don't spill your polish because it is not fun to have to cut individual carpet hairs <laughs> to get your polish stain out. So I have done that before. Red polish on white brand new carpet. <laughs> yes, it was a really dark yeah. purple polish on a white carpet that I was 
renting, um, I was renting the place and the carpet was brand new and it got everywhere because I didn't cap my polish. I had it like something like this instead of all the way capped and um, the polish went. Good. It was so bad, it was so bad. I spent hours, literally hours cutting each individual carpet hair so that way it didn't just look like a huge chunk was missing. Um, the landlord kind of didn't know. He was kind of like, that spot looks a little weird, but I don't really know what happened and I don't see any stains, so um, I got away with it. But don't ever do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how's your nail looking? Uh, looks mostly dry, a little, little bit wet still, just a so, tad. Okay. And um, it's kind of warm in our room now, so that's probably another reason why it hasn't fully dried yet. Oh, we have the lights actually run on our space too. Um, so another thing I think that's really important is your cleanup brush. Mm -hmm. To have your cleanup brush nearby um, because you will need it just for the little nicks and things. But I guess basically if you're ending off your manicure, you can't end off without putting cuticle oil, which is very important. So yes, especially your cuticle oil. Yep. Especially during these winter seasons, I'm sure a lot of you live in very cold, very dry places. So make sure you're having a good cuticle oil and like moisturizing routine for your hands. We see a lot of people who complain about like polish stain their hands. A lot of times it's dry skin that is around their nail and that's what polish loves to cling to and stain. I so. hope your landlord isn't watching. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Harmony, we hope so too. <laughs> yeah, we hope so. Well, he, you know, it's I don't live in that place anymore, so I don't have to worry. <laughs> I got my deposit back. <laughs> um, okay, so I think this is pretty dry. And Tiana, do you want to peel it? Let's see. Okay, I'm part of the nub club right now, so if... Oh, oh there oh, you go. Perfect. Okay. So it is kind of stretchy. Do you see that? Oh, and so satisfying too. <laughs> yep. Just put a little bit over. So if she had painted, then the paint would have been on this or, or the stamp, the remaining stamp, and basically her cuticle would have looked all nice and pretty. Yep. With minimal cleaning or no cleaning, you know? Yes. Because it doesn't help to like go like this. You just end up with polish everywhere. So. Well, and I remember the days of doing gradients when we didn't have a solution for that. And basically, actually, if I remember correctly, and if you, all of you have been doing gradients for that long, scotch tape was actually the solution mm -hmm. to tape up the cuticle. That's crazy. Yeah. So now there is Manny Mask. Yes. Again, latex free, so anybody can use it. Yes. And um, yeah, this is it. To, to have a successful stamp is to have the tools ready, you know, available for you. Um, and set up in a really nice fluid way so it makes stamping as easy as possible for you. And we actually do have a little hack as yes. well that we want to show you. So our uh, coworker, Carol, mm -hmm. she showed us this really awesome trick that she does to also make it easier when she's cleaning up. And she has a little glass jar with a plastic cover I haven't really seen these glass jars, but they look like um, the baby food size containers yeah. with like the wide mouth. Yes. She doesn't, she says she doesn't fill it all the way to the very top with cottons because she, I mean, we don't know if this is acetone resistant. So it's fine to just do it like this where you have some. But she says she puts acetone on this, so you can't it's see damp. it, but it's already wet and you can just pick it up and, and start. You're ready to go? wiping instead of having to pump 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 and then worry about the acetone splashing all over the place mm -hmm. for those of you who do have the pump you do know that that sometimes happens when you pump this thing sometimes it squashes off. out yeah. yeah i've had that happen yep and then it ends up splattering on you know something maybe you didn't want acetone to touch so doing it this way if you just pour a little bit of acetone with some cottons um, makes it nice and easy so that way all you have to do is just grab one and wipe it and throw it away instead of having to, again, pump. Like a face pad, basically. Yes. With your solution, but acetone instead. If you have a cap, um, a cover that is metal, that'll be even better, because then you can fill it up all the way if you want. That's completely up to you. But if not, this works fabulously too. And we love this idea. I've, 
I don't know why I never thought about it. So I'm definitely gonna have to try this out. Okay, and yeah, I think that kind of wraps it up. Again, if you see anything here that we're using, it's live on the site, you can go ahead and pick it up. And again, we're Maniology. You can find all of these items at www.maniology.com. I know we have some fans here who are saying that they absolutely love these products. They love the, the pineapple grabber. Thank you so much for you know supporting us and for sharing your nail stamping journey. And I think we have some time for some questions. So we're just gonna kind of scroll through here. Someone had mentioned that um, they had a friend who really covered her uh, lotus mat with lots of polish. Who, and I may know the same person. She sounds familiar, like a friend that I also have, <laughs> who has completely covered her station and has never cleaned it, uh, never cleaned any of the hardened polish off of it. So the best way to clean it, I would say, is to use acetone. It is annoying, um, and maybe a lot of that dried polish can just kind of flake off. I was just about to say that too, because <clears throat> um, I don't know if I'm that friend, but <laughs> I am definitely that girl that after I've worked so hard on my nails, the last thing I want to do is clean up. But yes. again, you know that that's my preference. Um, so polish will be left on the lotus mat, but what I have noticed is, you know, over time, polish will start to kind of peel. Uh, um, yeah, I guess it kind of flakes up. Mm -hmm. So you can go with tape and kind of tape off some of those. Maybe you can kind of brush off the mat a little. Or when I said tape here, so assuming that there was polish over here, you could kind of pick it up like this. And so you'd have yes. tape without having to use so much acetone. Because basically yes. what the acetone does is kind of reconstitutes the paint and then it starts getting all smudgy yes. and gnarly. It, it smudges everywhere. Yeah. So um, you can use tape, you can even use these stamping station pads. Like if you wanted, you could just take one and go over and get as much excess off as you can. And then after that, using Carol's trick, um, you could just go in with your pineapple cotton claw, or cotton grabber I mean, and wipe the rest away. Mm -hmm. So that way it makes it a little bit easier. Unfortunately, washing it in water isn't really gonna help. Um, Get the paint and yeah. everything off. Um, another thing I will mention though, um, especially if you're using dark colors, it, there is a possibility to stain if you're not a cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of keep that in mind. We have another mat here next to us that's completely stained. Of course, we don't use that for <laughs> video purposes, but just know, especially black, a lot of, you know, dark colors, they have the tendency to stain. So again, yes. if you want to keep your mat looking really nice, pristine and new, then I would definitely recommend cleaning it up right it after, up right away using this, a lot of cotton and then go, just go to town. Um, if you don't, however, and you do end up accidentally staining your mat, it's not going to ruin the function of your mat. Your mat mm -hmm. is still fine. I mean, unless you're doing social medias and lives and all this stuff, I could understand how you might want a pretty looking one, but if not, and it's just you doing it at home, it's really, it's fine. Mines at home are completely stained and like <laughs> messed up. You know, that friend, <laughs> that friend I was talking about, yeah, her mat is messed up. Yeah. <laughs> so, but does it mess up her stamping game? Do her nails still look good? Yes. Yes. So it's all good. Doesn't That's what matter. I was wondering what the air quotes were for. I was like, oh, that friend. I'm yes. that friend too. Okay. Yes. Asking for a friend kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah, these are some things to keep um, in mind. And also, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We covered mm. it all. Let me see if there's any other questions that you guys had. Um, I think... I see a lot of comments talking about how people love the mat and love the cotton grabber, the pineapple cotton grabber, and I'm happy to hear it. And I've also seen a lot of comments about the sticky stamping station. We, those three things, if you could only have three, these would be the three. My three. Yeah. These would be my three because you don't realize how much of a difference it makes until you have it and you're like, how did I ever live without it? But if you're not limited by three, then, then you all, know, everything. All is important, <laughs> for sure. All is important. But um, 
I think we're gonna sign off right now. You know, we just wanted to pop on to, to give you guys a really short video. Again, now you have the ability to set up your workspace for success, not ruin your workspace, and just get started on the right foot or the right nail. And uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to continue to keep putting your questions in the comments and we'll get to them. We do look at our comments. Mm -hmm. And we also are going to be doing more of these kind of educational sessions like every week. So you'll be hearing more of us. We want, if you have any topics you want us to cover, write it down. Yes. Uh, we would love to, you know, discuss these things and make stamping as simple and easy and fun and creative as possible for you. And do um, you have anything else, Steph? Nope, that's all. So just make sure you guys keep a lookout for our notifications about when our next lives are. Again, we are going to be doing these weekly segments where we talk about all kinds of fun, different um, stamping topics, stamping hacks. Uh, so we're trying to make sure that we keep these things like very, very simple for you guys and let you know what our favorite tips and tricks are. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us and we hope you guys have a lovely day. Yep, and a lovely week. Yeah. Take care. Yep. Bye. Bye.